Alright, so in today's video we are going to cover how to create a flight plan inside of SimBrief. So if you haven't already, uh, before you do start, go ahead and register and create an account. Uh, you can go on uh, simbrief.com um, as you'll be able to see up here um, on the actual panel. Once you've done that and created your account, um, when you come back to the SimBrief website you can go ahead and click on dispatch. And once you do that, you'll see that SIM brief actually loads. So we've got a few flight plans that we've already done. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a new one. So go ahead and click a uh, new flight. And what you'd want to do um, for your airline here, again, you can make something up if you really want to. Or you could actually add the details of a real airline. So for example, for British Airways, it's BAW. And the important thing here is that you have to put in there ICAO code. So if you're not sure what that is, Go ahead and Google your favorite airline and find out their ICAO code and then enter that in the airline field, all right? Same goes for flight number. Doesn't have to be a real flight number, but if you want to make it real, then you can go ahead and do that. One of the common ones that I use is 3321. Um, and again, maybe in a later video, I'll show you how I use that with them um, beyond ATC, which is like an AI um, ATC, which is really, really cool to um, use. So now we're going to fill in our departure and our arrival. So for departure, again, you'll need your ICAO code. So for example, if you want to fly from Heathrow to Dublin, um, you'll need those codes. If you're not aware of what they are, you can go ahead and Google those. If you can't Google those or you're not sure what to Google, you can just click on this um, search button here and then go here um, to your airport search and go ahead and type the airport that you want. So today we're going to choose Dublin as that's going to be my return flight um, that I'll be doing today. And then I'll be flying back to Heathrow where I'll be uh, connecting and flying off somewhere else. Fun. So tune in for that stream. So I'm going to go ahead and select Heathrow and I'm going to click on select. Again, you'll see the ICAO here, which is EGLL. LHR is something that you probably see quite a lot, uh, particularly when you're flying. If you've flown out of Heathrow before, you'll see that. But this is something that you would not have seen before, but that's the ICAO code. You can go ahead and select that and you're all good. If you want to choose an alternative, uh, you can go ahead and do that if you like, but we're going to go ahead and skip that. Uh, in the aircraft type here on the drop down, you can go ahead and select the aircraft that you're using, particularly if you're using... Uh, I'm not too familiar with X-Plane, but if you're using Microsoft Flight Simulator, go ahead and select the aircraft that, are you, that you're using. So I typically use the Boeing um, 747, so we'll go ahead and select that as an option. I use the Boeing 7478. It's really, really important that you se um, select the correct aircraft because you'll make some performance calculations based on that. Particularly when, you know, when it comes to like the fuel that you need, you know, how fast you need to be going to take off, etc, etc. Select the correct one. And that'll be right. And then, of course, you know, I, I appreciate that you can have mods um, on a flight simulator. So click on the drop down. If you're using the salty simulations one, then go ahead and select that. Otherwise, you can select the default, which will be the Azobo version. So we're going to choose default because that's the only one we have available. And you can leave everything else as checked. And we'll leave our OFP chart type as Lido. You go ahead and like make some changes and stuff like that to the route. But we really want it to calculate it itself. We're not experts <laughs> in navigation just yet. But we will be soon. So go ahead to the top here and click on generate flight. And give it a couple of seconds to go ahead and generate. And then we can review what our flight plan looks like. Cool. So now that we're here we'll see like the initial details that we entered. So you remember our flight number is now our airline ICAO code and our flight number as well. This will also be our call sign as well. So if we're speaking to ATC or you're using, you know, um, oh, forgotten the name as it turns out. Um, but if you're using any kind of ATC operator, um, then this is the call sign that you'd use if you're communicating with them. Um, you've got your departure date, your departure time. Obviously you can set your time to a later date if you really want to. Um, so we'll probably go ahead and do that a little bit later on or just create a new plan. Um, you've got your initial altitude. This will be your cost index that you enter into your FMC. Another video coming on that. All of the re relevant other details, including your like load sheet for you know how many passengers you'll have, how much estimated fuel you'll have, etc, etc. The one that we really care about here is your route, okay? You may or may not be familiar with this, what this means. So we'll go ahead and start and I'll explain a little bit, right? So first we have EIDW, right? So we scroll up, we have it here, which is our departure, which is Dublin. So that's where we're going to depart from. And from 
runway 28 right, okay? So that's how you understand that. Next, we'll have our SID, which is our standard instrument departure, and uh, which will be like the particular route that we'll take uh, when we're departing from that particular runway. There can be many different ones, but that's again for another video. Um, and then we'll have our actual like um, first waypoint, basically. Um, one thing that you need to sort of keep in mind is that you'll have waypoints and you'll also have airways as well. Um, and again, we can go in depth into that probably a little bit later on, but just as a quick overview, um, if it's all letters um, that you have um, available in the name or in the word, uh, then it's a waypoint. If you have a mix of letters and numbers, like P2, for example, right? That's going to be an airway, right? So that's really important when you're filling that in the FMC. But I'll do like an in-depth deep dive on like what you need to enter into your FMC to set the um, navigation and autopilot to work. And one more thing is on the right hand side here we've got a chart which maps out all of the waypoints that we'll be crossing as we approach London Heathrow. And what you can also do is zoom in as well. And one more important thing is that with Simbri it'll also give you something on um, your map which is called TOD. You'll notice that on the route we don't have TOD, it doesn't exist, right? But your TOD stands for top of descent. Um, so it'll show you like what flight level that you need to reach uh, when you get to that point, right? So make sure that you uh, configure that or change your altitude as you get closer to that top of descent. That's really, really important. So here we'll have an initial altitude of 35,000 feet, or also known as flight level 350. Uh, which we'll have here just before the top of descent and if we click on the top of descent in the altitude you'll see flight level 230 right which is about 23,000 feet so we'll have to update that but again another video coming on that a little bit later on when we cover like a full ILS approach which will be really really cool so hopefully that explains a lot to everyone you can go ahead and download this or you can import it um, into Microsoft Flight Simulator um, so yeah thanks for watching and I uh, hope that has helped you all